Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a some assemblage required video. Also combined with a stitches and stencils video, which is a series that I do with MK and Sandy over at State Goddess and some assemblage required. And that just means we're using stitches, stitching and stenciling today. Can be hand stitching, can be machine stitching, whatever you prefer, and um, some sort of stenciling. And I am working with a family photo that is of my son's girlfriend's family. And I am making a layout for them for a as a gift. So I am using a bunch of the Plum Grove 49 and Market collection. I'm using these two large floral pieces and then a couple of the other pieces out of the laser cut elements. And um, I think they were perfect because there's a lot of the purpley colors in this with um, a couple of their shirts. And then it also goes into the reds because of an, uh, their gra the grandmother's shirt and then the bench that they're sitting on. So I thought this was perfect because it brings in all of those colors and kind of ties them all together. I am using several different things from some assemblage required. The piece that I am punching out right now is actually a dusty attic piece, but it came in the November monthly embellishment box from some assemblage required. And I will link that down below for you. Um, it's really cool. It kind of reminded me of like a wedding knot type of uh, wreath, not wreath, <laughs> a wedding knot quilt type of deal and so I thought that was perfect for a family and so I'm going to go ahead and use those but I am going to alter them. The wood piece that is looks like a cutting board that has our family recipe was something that came in the Some Assemblage Required uh, Advent Calendar. It is actually the item for today the 23rd and then I am also using some of the floral bits and winter floral bits uh, from the packaging packages that you see on the left hand side there. I'm going to pull a, a varying um, pieces out of there to tuck in. This stencil is from Pear Tree Cut Files. Um, I just wanted something that was really simple and small that just added texture and not a lot of um, pattern to it and I wanted it to be kind of random and so I decided to go ahead and use that. I'll try to put the link down below for that as well. And I am putting some paper glaze through it in Snowdrop White and Boysenberry, kind of a little bit of a mix of the two because I don't want the Boysenberry to be super dark. So I'm using the white to kind of lighten it up and to give it kind of a faded outlook. And now I am going to use some uh, paper glaze in, I believe it's Carnation Pink, um, just to go over these chipboard pieces and I am using a sponge dauber to do that because I feel like it does a better job of covering it without getting a bunch of the uh, medium down in the grooves. If you use a um, paintbrush I, I always end up getting the medium stuck down in the grooves. So then I took it over to my sewing machine and I used a gold thread and look it's a huge mess on the back you guys. My tension is really off. I don't know what to do about it. Um, my mom is normally the one that fixes it for me and she is not here. She is out of state in Idaho visiting my brother. Um, and so she is uh, recuperating from a fall up there. And so I don't have anyone to fix it, but I made it work. The front looks fine. The back I'm not going to worry about because I'm going to back this entire piece on a piece of white paper, but I'm going to alter the edges and uh, you'll see how I do that towards the end of the video. So it's all going to be covered up, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. The front side looks fine. Not a big deal. Now I am tucking these chipboard pieces under the photo a bit, which means I'm going to add a bit of foam underneath my photo. I'm using foam from Walmart. It is adhesive backed on one side. And so I'm sticking that side to my photograph and then I'm actually going to use hot glue today to adhere it because I don't want to sit and wait. Um, I'm, I actually am late in getting this video up. I actually made this uh, this morning, the 23rd. Um, and so I'm just getting it all up and ready the day um, that it is actually due. So I'm behind in a lot of stuff and uh, that is leading me to tell you that I may not have very many videos for the rest of the month. Actually, maybe not for the rest of the year. 
uh, well, that would be the rest of the month, and maybe into the first week of uh, January. So um, I'm not intentionally taking a break, but I've got a ton to do. We are going up to visit my parents and my brother and his family in Idaho uh, next week. So I won't be in town, and I don't know that I'll get a whole lot of stuff done prior to going that I will be able to share because, you know, we've got Christmas in two days and I've got a lot to do with the holidays. So anyway, I got behind. I was sick, still sick, getting over that. My apologies. I will be back in January for sure. Um, And that leads me to tell you that there is a new class that MK and I are hosting for the entirety of the year of 2024. Um, I have run this class before. So if you've taken... um, the, the class, I've re, we're rebranding it. It's called Memories, the Making of Me. If you took the being impactful storytelling, being me class, the prompts are the same. However, all of the um, sketches and the videos are all going to be different. So you're welcome to come and join us again. Or um, if you've never taken it before, I would love for you to come and join us for the first time. It is really telling your story, um, not your family. Sto- well, it can be involving your family as well, but it's really telling your story and how you, what, um, what has happened in your life to make you the person you are. And uh, I was really inspired to create this class because I sat across from my mom's scrapbooking one day and she proceeded to tell me some stories I had never heard in, you know, 40 something years of my t- entire life. And so that's what encouraged me to create this class to tell some of those deeper stories of things that make you the person that you are. So come and check that out. I'll put a link down below for that in case you're interested. Um, We will have monthly Zoom sessions and you will get the digital content um, each month. There is a 12 prompts, 12 sketches, and then 12 Zoom sessions where the Zoom sessions are more of a um, collaborative experience, not necessarily me teaching, but um, a collaborative experience for the entire group to kind of come together and talk about ways to tell our stories and ways to do that through scrapbooking. So links are down below. I am removing the uh, masking off of the top of these wood veneer pieces and those are the floral bits and it's a combination of the floral bits and the winter floral bits that I am using to tuck in to bring some of this wood veneer into these clusters because I am using this piece from the advent calendar that has a family recipe on it it's super cute Um, I know she's sold out of this advent calendars but I am using my pieces because I love them. And I want you guys to see what uh, kind of things she included. They were not Christmas related, even though it was a Christmas advent calendar. But um, next year when she does this, I highly recommend getting it. It was so worth it. There are so many amazing things in it. Um, And I am super happy with that. Now, if you aren't sure what was in the calendar, you can go to her business page over on Facebook to check that out because she has posted what is um, has been revealed each day. I've also posted on my in my own group, Galaxy Girl Creations, which there's a link for, link for that below as well. Um, so you can go and check those out if you're interested in that. Um, and that way you'll know what kinds of things are provided Um, in case you want to get that next year. Anyway, I'm using some foam to pop up a few things here to make sure that everything is well supported. This is actually going in a frame, uh, like a shadow box type of frame. So I want to make sure everything is going to stay where I put it. And um, a little bit of added dimension is okay. I did create a um, bow to go at the top of that chipboard or wood veneer piece. And um, that's adding more dimension. So the, the shadow box is going to work well for that. Now I am using some Catherine Pooler Mer- ink in Merlot to ink up the edges of my white paper. I did trim a quarter of an inch off of my entire layout. So an eighth of an inch off of each side. I did that before I actually put the layout together. And now I am just gluing everything down with some liquid glue because I feel like that's going to hold the best. 
And while that sets up, I am going to add a label. This was also another uh, piece that was in the advent calendar. It was a package of labels and I just love labels. So I thought this would be perfect. It's uh, a little bit look distressed looking and uh, it's got kind of that same color of Merlot around the edge. And I think that is perfect um, to be able to put the date on this particular layout. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year's. If I don't talk to you before then, um, thank you so much for spending time with me. And I hope that you have enjoyed this video and are inspired to create. And um, if you have questions or comments, you can leave those down below. As always, I'm behind in responding, but I assure you I will respond to them and be reading them very soon. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. See you next year. Bye-bye.